Good morning. I'm behind the gab with Jason this week. We're going to have a kind of a recap of the week. We're going to talk about Salvador Mundi, the Leonardo da Vinci painting is back in the news. Uh, we're going to talk about the fire at a Kansas City, Kansas storage facility that burned eight storage units of antiques and art to the ground. We're going to recap our auction from Monday night and talk ahead about some auctions coming forward. And we might even talk just a hair about the Kansas City Chiefs on this weekend here in Kansas City. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, just go ahead and post a comment down here, lower right, and we'll be happy to address those as we're going along. Let me go ahead and share this post on my wall so like my friends can see that I'm at the office and doing this today. So, so, yeah, so we're going to do a recap of the week. Salvador Mundi, Leonardo da Vinci's $450 million painting that sold last year to the Louvre Abu Dhabi through some mediaries is back in the news. A report came out on a website called Narrative. We shared on our Behind the Gavel page yesterday. Conspiracy theory for sure, but interesting nonetheless. It does connect some dots that are intriguing. Probably most, uh, one of the most interesting things about the Salvador Mundi piece is it was supposed to be revealed in September at a big event at the Louvre Abu Dhabi, and it was not, and nobody has seen it in the public eye for quite some time, which is an interesting thing. Um, there's as it's the longer it's not in public, the more stories like this will come about. Whether they're this story connects dots between uh, the, the uh, 2016 can, a presidential campaign and the painting uh, saying that it was a money laundering scheme between uh, the Russians and the Saudis and Trump. You know, there's a lot of you can make a, you can make a lot of leaps in a lot of different conversations. I don't know if that one's true or not, but it does make for some fascinating reading, um, and it's an interesting thing. And again, as long as the the Mundi piece stays out of the public view, people are going to continue to speculate as to why that is. Is it just a condition issue? Is it just a, a provenance issue? Is it just a uh, authenticity issue, or is there more to it? Is Robert Mundi actually investigating it? Uh, so the longer it stays out of the public eye the more these stories will come into to effect and uh, continue to be talked about. Just get my gavel pin straight in there. That's kind of embarrassing. Um, so that was in the news this week. I uh, shared that yesterday. Like I said, fascinating read. It could be completely fiction, but there's uh, it's still fun to read. Last weekend here in Kansas City, over in Kansas City, Kansas specifically, for those of you who are familiar with the area, you know that Kansas City is a border city. It straddles the state line of Kansas and Missouri. We're in Missouri, but uh, Kansas City, Kansas is literally a mile from my office. And a storage facility, an old warehouse building, burned to the ground. And one of the tenants was a gentleman by the name of Anthony Rysick. And he claimed to have eight units worth full of antiques, whether that was old cars or tractors, art, porcelain, ceramics, and related objects is what he claimed was in there and was burned. And <clears throat> he's a collector and he says he buys and sells. Unfortunately, he did not have insurance, and this led to huge conversations on our page here, also on the Talking Antiques page on Facebook, uh, about what is necessary for insuring a collection. Uh, do you need an appraisal? What's an appraisal good for? Can you appraise and insure things in the storage unit? Uh, it's a huge conversation. We had insurance agents comment on it. We had collectors comment on it. We had collection advisors comment on it. That was really an interesting portion of that conversation over the Talking Antiques page. And if you're on that page on Facebook, there's always really interesting information. Helen Chug is one of the administrators over there and does a great job of sharing really interesting information on a regular basis. But there's also some really interesting conversations taking place, including that one about the storage facility. Um, and what you need to do to appraise and insure a collection is different than insuring and appraising singular items. Obviously, there's a larger cost involved. There's more time involved. And with the fluidity of a dealer buying and selling, insuring inventory is really a challenge. If you have any thoughts or concerns on that, go ahead and post them here. If you're in the insurance industry and that's something that you do insure, please share your information here. There's always people asking us about that. And we're looking for always looking for good, reliable partners in a lot of different fields of what we do. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the other thing we'll talk about is our auction on Monday night was wildly successful. I had 288 lots of merchandise to sell. Uh, had Tiffany lamps, 
great collection of Native American jewelry, some interesting artwork, some interesting furniture, and it was received well locally and abroad. We had um, 290 lots. There were 74,789 lot views. So on average, each lot was looked at more than 250 times. Of course, there were some that were viewed much more than that and some much less. But on average, over the course of the auction, each lot was looked at 258 times, give or take. And that is a huge number. If you sold online, you watched the counters on eBay or anything else, to get 258 people to look at an item is a pretty staggering thing. Uh, we're really uh, happy with how our marketing is received, how far it expands, and where it gets to. Uh, we had 323 bidders for 288 lots of merchandise, more than a bidder per lot, which I think is a great ratio. Uh, and we had a lot of competitive bidding throughout, which totaled uh, 3,682 bids actually placed on items in the auction. So that's what a dozen or so bids per lot, uh, which again is a, is a great number. If we, you know, if we average 12 lots, 12 bids per lot across an auction, it's going to be a successful auction. That's a lot of people interested. That's a lot of collector involvement, a lot of dealer involvement, a lot of involvement by people just in curious and, and interested in the objects. So really happy with that. We had around 130 invoices printed. So just barely more than two items per invoice, which is another indication of a high retail bidder participation. Uh, dealers will buy a lot of things, whereas retail buyers will buy one, two, or three and be really happy. So we can average down that two to three items per invoice. That means we had a lot of bidder, a lot of retail collectors uh, participating, which as a seller is extremely important. If you're looking to sell, you want to make sure that you are selling to as many collectors as is possible because, you know, logic tells you at the end of the day, collectors will pay more than dealers because they don't have to worry about the profit and the cost involved with that on the back end. Which leads us to what's coming up. We have the Richard Lebowski Artist Estate Auction next on the docket. <coughs> really excited about this one. He's an artist born in, I think, 1934 in St. Joseph, Missouri. Uh, expressed, you know, a lot of interest and talent in, in creating art early on. Uh, his early works are very much Thomas Hart Benton inspired, very a lot of watercolors with a really strong regionalist look and feel to them. Uh, some of the titles of those include Don Fishing, Farms on the Bluffs of the Missouri. Uh, so you can kind of get in your mind's eye really, you know, sentimental. Midwest regionalist watercolors uh, is where he started his career at. Then he moved to Paris in 57, give or take, and studied there, uh, worked there, and became pretty well known. He was on a good track, was showing in several different galleries in Paris, was recognized as one of seven American artists in Paris in 1962, started doing, uh, in the 70s, started doing these kind of multimedia almost decoupage-ish sculptural two-dimensional pieces where he basically takes a painting form and builds it up with concrete and mixed materials and painted some, didn't others, just had a, a textural imagery that is really interesting. And uh, we have a bunch of those in the auction. He has works in the Albrecht Kemper Museum of Art uh, as, uh, in their permanent collection and in many other places. His works have sold at Christie's. Back in uh, about eight years ago, a collection had three pieces of his that sold through Christie's Auction House in Paris. So he has some information out there. He, uh, he died in 1983 early. Uh, he died early on in the AIDS epidemic. So he was a, uh, an early casualty of that uh, before AIDS was even a word that I probably even heard in 1983. You know, Pre President Reagan didn't mention that term until 1985, and that's when funding for research and, and medical research really kicked into gear over the next five years or so. Uh, but like I said, Richard died in 1983 of AIDS. And at that time, his work at that time was shipped back to his brother in St. Joe. Uh, the family distributed pieces amongst themselves, but basically they were stored for the last 35 years or so uh, in a garage or a farm or in a basement. So uh, these pieces haven't been seen by the public in, a, in decades. And again, we're really excited to bring another artist's estate to the market here in, at the KC Auction Company, something we really enjoy doing and I always have a lot of, uh, it's, it's always just fun to see that development of an artist, have a large group of pieces to, to offer, and it continues the work we started last year. Last year, you know, we sold 943 paintings. Uh, this year, we're on course to do basically the same, if not more. We are already over 
Uh, that's 70 paintings a month, give or take. We did that in January. February is going to do that and more. And I'm signing a contract with the family tomorrow that has some really nice California art that we're really excited to bring to the table in the next uh, month or so. So that's kind of a quick recap of the week here at the Casey Auction Company. Again, Salvador Mundi's back in the news. A fire at a Kansas City, Kansas storage facility destroyed eight units worth of antiques and collectibles. Had a great auction Monday night, and the Richard Lebowski estate is coming up soon. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or thoughts, go ahead and post them here at a comment. We'll be happy to address those as they come in. If you think your friends and family might be interested in watching this, go ahead and share it on your page. Hit the like button, the love button, whatever you want to do to let people know that you watched it. We really appreciate that. If you have any other questions, you can always send us an email at info at kcauctioncompany.com. Info at kcauctioncompany.com. And company is spelled out. And you can always give us a phone call at 816-283-3633. Uh, it's starting, we're having freezing rain here in Kansas City today. Tomorrow is uh, Chiefs playoff game against the Indianapolis Colts. We're all pretty excited about that here in Kansas City. Concerned about the Chiefs history uh, last 25 years or so in the playoffs, especially against the Colts. But uh, we should come out victorious. We're all hoping that they do. Otherwise, have a great weekend. Hopefully your holidays were nice and quiet or eventful in a good way. And we look forward to talking to you again next week.